Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as I said before, I'm Valerie Bittner. I'm an independent model, actress, and voiceover artist. And I have been in this business since 1993. And I've learned a lot over the years. So this presentation um, is just to give you an idea uh, of what I learned on how you can take your marketing from forgettable to incredible. Today, the one sure way to fail is to be boring. Your chance for success is to be remarkable. So everybody just take a moment, think about your marketing, think about your advertising. Does it excite you? Does it excite your clients? So the first thing you want to do is you want to do different things. It's easy to stand out when you do something that nobody else is doing. So when you're in a business, real estate, financial planning, uh, where you have so many competitors in the area, you have to figure out in your marketing how to present what you do different than your competition. And to beat your competition, you can't just be a little better than they are. You have to do something different than they do. Then do it differently. There's a difference. Don't worry, I have visuals to, that you'll understand all this then. So you need to not only demonstrate how you do something, how, how do you do it differently? How do you add that little touch of class, that little bit of humor, and uh, make it seem special? How do you make real estate special? as compared to, you know, someone else that's just going out and showing houses. <laughs> okay. All right. I love Donna Hosfeld. She sells insurance. Boring. Nobody wants to talk insurance. It, it's tedious. Nobody wants to do it. But don't you want to hang out with the insurance chick? She's freaking fun. She has made insurance fun, and that's why Donna is so wonderful. The other great thing about Donna is that car wrapped car. People will see it at the Superior Diner. They'll see it, you know, outside of a Lehigh Valley and Leap meeting. They'll take a picture of it. They post it on Facebook, you know, I saw Donna Hosfeld again. They're advertising for her. How wonderful is that? She, that's probably paid for that car wrapped, you know, car a couple of times over. <laughs> So what you want to do also is stir emotions. People are on the internet because they're looking for something, right? They're looking for the local yoga class. They're looking to bring down their electric bill. They're looking for a house. But what is going to make them come to you rather than go to somebody else? So how are you stirring emotions with your marketing and advertising? I'm talking about you know, pull on the heartstrings a little bit, <clears throat> maybe to discuss a little pain they're having. That electric bill is really high, you know, and you want to talk about the pain of it all. And then Jeff Bartholomew comes in with his big, you know, Superman cape. He's going to save the day for you. That's what he wants to do with his advertising. Be consistent. If you have hung out with Rita Guthrie for five minutes, you know that you need consistency in your advertising. And as you can see, like my banner, my name tag, uh, if you've gone to my website, I've even watermarked you know, all of my slides, which by the way, if you ever do a presentation, make sure you watermark all of your slides just to protect them. You, know, you want consistency in your branding. You want somebody, we all want to be the target bullseye. We all want to be the Nike swoop. So think about that with your advertising. I'm approached by many people about doing a web video before they even have their website. And I'm like, okay, what are your colors? What's your font? What's your logo? What's your tagline? And you want to have that consistency because you want to be using those colors, using that logo, using that tagline in the video in your original advertising so that it's consistent, so that when people see that, they're like, huh, that's Cappy Pash mode. I know that. So what's your marketing objective? You think you know it.
Okay, you always want to start with who's your target audience? Who are they? So I was talking with Denise before we started today about yoga and you know, we have these people who are really advanced and they can stand on their head and twist in all sorts of pretzels. And then you have people who may be struggling with a terminal illness. And they know that they need yoga that to, you know, have strength. So she's going to have classes that are also targeted at them as well. So she has a wide range of people um, who's her target audience. And what are their responsibilities? They may have a full-time job. Do you offer classes at night? Do you offer them first thing in the morning? Uh, what are their major concerns? And what are their challenges? So you have to keep that in mind. And if you have someone who absolutely loves you, that's the person you want to talk to. Why, why did they hire you? Why did they choose you over the competition? There's going to be a lot of answer right there for your marketing. Okay, so what's your relationship with your target audience? Do you know? Do you know what they're saying about you? And what solutions are you offering them? So always keep that in mind. You just, I'm going to pick on sleepies a lot today. You don't want to turn into a sleepies ad. Does everybody know what I mean by that? Is there a mattress on sale today, Jeff? Yes. Why? Because every freaking day we see, you know, 20% off. It's a Christmas sale. It's the after Christmas sale. It's the President's Day sale. And then we're going to have a Valentine's Day sale. There's always a mattress on sale. It becomes noise after a while. You don't even recognize it anymore. So you want to be talking solutions for the different people who are part of your target audience. All right. So what is your target audience's perception of you? Do they think of you as sleepies? Because they get on your Facebook page and every day, 20% off, we're having a sale. Talk about the solutions that your product or services, you know, are you meeting their challenges? How do you differentiate yourself from your competition? I love uh, your neighborhood dry cleaner. He picks up and delivers at my house or at your office. How freaking cool is that? And he's organic on top of it. That's what sets him apart from the brick and mortar store down the street and competitive pricing as well. That's when I would sit down and I'd want you to tell me about the solutions uh, that your product or services, you know, offer your, um, your target audience. Okay, so who's your competition? My friend Tom Elmer down at Pix Car Studio, when he said this to me, I said, I am putting this in my presentation. He said, if you can scratch your name off your advertising and replace it with your competitor's name, your advertising is a waste of money. And I'm going to give you an example. I was at another networking uh, group, and a gentleman came up to me, and he was all excited to tell me that he hired a web designer who specialized in accountants' websites. So I looked at him, and as calmly as I could, I said, so you're telling me that your website looks like every other accountant? And he went, yeah. Yeah. So really, if you were surfing the net for an accountant and everybody had the same page, don't, isn't it like throwing a dart at a dartboard and that's who you're going to choose? Or are you going to choose the person who stands out from the competition? That's what Tom meant by this. OK, so your competition. What does your target audience think of them? That's really important when you're doing your marketing research, when you're trying to determine how to develop your marketing or advertising. Um, because they may love them or hate them for a very specific reason. And if they're loving them for uh, a specific reason, you got to kick it up a notch. How do they compare in your market share? And what are their strengths? And what are their weaknesses? So if they make the best steak in town, maybe you don't want to focus on steak. You want to focus on seafood. So how do we integrate all this data into your marketing message? So did you know that studies have shown that stock photos are often ignored by people? How many times have you ate at a diner that has the most beautiful food graphics? And that plate that you get didn't look anything like 
those pictures on the menu. And don't you feel a little lied to? And you go on a website that is nothing but stock imagery, aren't you saying to yourself, well, who are these people? You know, if Kapinga had photos of somebody else's clothes, I, I, I want to know, well, what can you do? It, that bugs me about hairdressers. When hairdressers' entire site is nothing but stock imagery, well, okay, that's a really pi pretty picture of hair. What can you do? Can you do hair as pretty as that? I want to see your photos. Uh, Anthony Ashley is really wonderful because in their social media, all day long, they're posting photos of the hair that they're doing that day, and I think that's really smart of them. <clears throat> there was a marketing study done by a company that created two separate websites for the same company. The one used entirely stock images, and the other used original photography. The one with original photography did 40% more business because it had a strong connection to the people who ran it, their product or service. So think about it. Could you use 40% more business? So let's use this as an example. Here's some stock images. So uh, who are these companies? So this one up here, is this a financial planning firm? Is this a local accounting firm? Um, does this lady um, sell health and wellness products? Or is she, um, uh, uh, is it the clothes? You know, we, we don't know. And this is like one of my favorites, you know, the older couple. Is this for a financial planning firm? Or is this a Viagra ad? <laughs> so if you have a financial planning company, do you really want the local urologist using, using the exact same stock image on their website to sell an erectile dysfunction drug as you are for a retirement plan? Think about it. So that's where original photography really is important. So let's talk original photography. You can do so much with it. I was junk mail. So if you're sending out um, a mailing, you can take advantage of the envelope and use original photography. If you're selling any kind of some, something someone would wear, this was post-plastic sur surgery garments catalog, by the way. This was the calmest one that I could post because it had a lot of compression garments for uh, breast augmentation and uh, tummy tucks and things like that. But the entire catalog showed how the garments were worn. And I, as somebody who purchases garments, I want to see that garment on someone. I want to see how it hangs. I know Beatrice does this really well. She always has all of her clothes on models in her advertising, which I think is important. And then before and after, does your product or service you know, take you from point A and then to point B. Again, original photography in what you do in your company. If you're going to have, or if a magazine has approached you and they want to do an article about you or your company, take advantage of it. Don't have them use a stock image. Don't have them use your logo, because they'll use your logo somewhere within the article. Use some original photography. So. Uh, when Lehigh Country Club was named in Lehigh Valley Style Magazine, they hired a photographer and myself, you know, to do an original shoot. Northampton Community College, yes, alumni, uh, when they do their billboard campaign, they're usually actual students who have graduated and they're saying, you know, this is what this graduate is doing. Where are you going? And it's a great campaign. So now I'm going to pick on realtors. When you are advertising in a program, maybe for an event, uh, especially nonprofits, if you are a sponsor of that event, a lot of times you'll get different levels of sponsorship. And for 50, 100 bucks, a lot of times you can do what they call a business card size ad. And everybody does this. And everybody submits the business card. And do we really look at them anymore? because they all kind of look the same. And don't even get me started on the blue-gray background. We are not in eighth grade anymore, people. Don't do it. 
Gail Hoover was brilliant in this. She was advertising uh, for a Steelhawks game. And so instead of doing the boring business card ad, she shot this with um, Kelly Pupkick, uh, a graphic designer. So it has the whole football theme to it. You know, uh, put Gail Hoover on your team and score big. People are going to look at this. They're going to stop and look at it in the program. Are they going to stop and look at your business card ad? For the money that she spent on this, I really feel she kicked a field goal with this one. I had to think, what sport? Okay. So next thing I want to talk about is the audio content of your marketing. Have you listened to your voicemail recently? Who's listened to their voicemail recently? Good for you. Your customers have. Your potential customers have as well. Remember, that is most probably the first impression they are going to get of your business. And if it says, hi, I'm John, leave me a message. <laughs> and that actually happened. There was a gentleman who used to come to Lehigh Valley Elite, John Nielsen. Um, he's like, Val, I clean people's grease traps. I have a van, but I, need, I know my outgoing message is terrible. We hack, I wrote him an outgoing message. We went in his car. He handed me his cell phone, and I re-recorded his outgoing message for him. So, it is something that you can do um, affordably that can take you from just having a van and a cell phone to making it sound like you have a brick and mortar business and a staff. And just like Scuba Entertainment did. Thank you for calling Scuba Entertainment. We are an award-winning DJ entertainment, lighting, and photo booth service provider recognized for our excellence by both The Knot and Wedding Wire. If you are calling for a personalized event quote or to check date availability, press 1. So you get the idea. You know, here's a DJ. He basically packs up his equipment in a van and goes from event to event. He doesn't have a brick-and-mortar place, but now when you call him, it sounds like you're calling an office and a staff. And it just takes you from here to here. So the web video on the landing page of your website. If you're using a series of photographs and video the way I did, again, think of a professional voiceover. I was attending um, a uh, networking meeting, and a production company showed a video that they did but they used an electronic voice from the internet. And I'm thinking for a couple of extra bucks, you can have a professional voiceover. This is my web video on the landing page of my website. So you're a business owner. To save money, you've decided to eliminate the middleman and take your advertising into your own hands. You've hired the photographers and the production companies directly, but you're still going through an agency to find your model or spokesperson. Why not cut out the agency and hire the talent yourself? That's where I come in. Hi, I'm Valerie Bittner. I want to take your marketing plan from forgettable to incredible. In my years as a model, actor, and voice artist, I've promoted numerous products and services in print and film, everything from law firms to car washes. I've also used my outgoing personality and speaking skills to represent companies in live settings like seminars, trade shows, and community events. The talent in your advertising can make or break your campaign, and in the long run, maybe even your business. Choose someone who's experience and skill to represent your business. Let me take as much care of your company image as you do. I can't wait to work with you. Visit ValerieBittner.com. Again, that's ValerieBittner.com. Okay, so that's going to bring me to video. The chances of you getting a page one listing on Google is 53 times more likely with video. It's getting to the point where nobody's reading anymore. So think about it. A website visitor will stay two minutes longer on a site if there's video. And four out of 10 shoppers will visit a store online as a direct result of watching your video. So if you're trying to drive traffic to your website, it's video, video, video. It's that important. Thank you, Kate Elfata, wherever you are. 
who sent me this video that not only shows that there are some people who should never be in front of a camera, but these people actually run the production company. I am not going to show you the entire video, but I'm going to show you enough <laughs> to make you really shop for the right production company. This is a production company's web video. Hi, I'm Sharon. And I'm Fred. We, we do, do movies. movies. So who needs a movie? Here comes the bride. Are you an artist or a tradesperson? <laughs> Why not jazz up your website? Do you need a website? We can help with that. What about commercials or Would fundraisers? Would you hire these people to do your web video? Now, they even said that they do websites as well. I know, Lewis is over there, and Lewis is like, I got this can right here. What about costume parties? I am not joking. That is a real video that he found, and she's like, oh, Valerie, you need to see this video. And I'm like, see it? I have put it into my marketing presentation. So there's... There's some rules, and, and I can sit and I can talk how to choose a production company for days. But the very first thing you should do is talk to your friends. You should look at videos that you like that kept your attention to the end, and then find out who the production company is. You should then look at your competitor's video. Is it a good video or is it a bad video? Remember, you want your advertising to be as good or better than theirs. So either you want to pilfer their production company or find someone who can do better. And then watch those videos. Watch them, watch them, watch them. And look for all the things that I said in the beginning. Are they showcasing what sets you apart from your competition? Are they showcasing um, consistency you know, throughout the video? Keep that all in mind when you're watching company videos. <clears throat> so here are my rules. The video on the landing page of your website, this is the first video that anyone's going to watch of you, one minute overview of your company. That's it. Sum it up. You're not there to sell. Remember in all of your advertising, you're not selling. You're getting someone to come, be intrigued enough to come through the door. You make the sale when they come through the door. So you're just trying to let everybody know what you do. Um, I know someone who um, is a member of Lehigh Valley Elite. They hired a company to produce a video for them. Uh, they sent it to me very proudly, six and a half minutes long. Three minutes in, I wanted to kill myself. Her own mother would not have sat through this video. And all it did was say, hi, this is what I do. This is my store. This is where we're located. And at no point in time did it say what set her apart from her competition. There was no call to action. It was, and I know how much she paid for it, and it just really broke my heart that she was ripped off so badly. So again, stick with what you do, what makes you unique, how you do it differently. Always end with a call to action. Um, like us on Facebook and get 10% off your first order. Uh, you know, check out our website for, you know, more of our product and services. And please, please, please do not waste time saying how friendly and honest you are. When I'm looking for cars, uh, uh, tires on the internet, I'm not looking for the honest tire dealership. Have you ever done that? The friendly dry cleaner. Creepy. Don't get too friendly with me. You know, I want the organic dry cleaner. I want someone who's buy three tires, get the fourth one for free. That's who I'm looking for. Save the friendly and honest for your client customer testimonials. OK, uh, you may have met Alfred Poole. Poor, he used to be a member of Lehigh Valley Elite. He, in his book, gave different directions that you can go with your video. So you want to split them up. So like I said, the video on the landing page of your website is a one-minute overview. Then you have the whole rest of your website 
that you can use for video. And um, who's a good match for your product? That's a great video. Um, educate um, in an aspect of your, uh, uh, your business that's confusing for customers. Again, I'm going to pick on Denise. You know, uh, people think that yoga is all getting into a pretzel and oh my gosh, I couldn't do that. So she may want to post us a short video about how that's not the case. Um, attach a celebrity endorsement. Uh, you may have seen Larry Holmes has been doing uh, commercials recently for St. Luke's Hospital. Uh, and you want to compete without naming your competition because then you're just tacky and you, you seem bitter. So you never want to do that. Um, and then help uh, with how you contribute to the community. People love to hear uh, all of the things that you do for charity. I mean, what Jeff told us, you know, during his commercial blew me away. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is just so terrific. And you want as many people to know that as possible. So I got some examples. So your homepage video. This I did for Hello, Cincinnati. my name is Valerie Bittner and I want to talk to you about mobile apps. Visitors who view your company internet site on a smartphone will see the site, but will they be able to read it? Probably not, unless the visitor is prepared to engage in digital athletics. Did you know that the mobile internet usage is So it's a one-minute overview to about how they provide mobile teams, apps And that 61% of customers who visit a mobile unfriendly site is likely to go to a competitor's site? What's needed is a mobile app. A mobile app is simply a web page that's optimized for the mobile device. You don't need to publish the app at the Apple Store or Android Market. Instead, there's an automatic navigation away from your existing home page to a different page that's optimized for the smartphone. Technology advances enable development of the mobile app very quickly. Reusing content from your existing website rendered properly on all major smartphones. Therefore, a mobile app can be developed inexpensively. That's what I did using my friends at Centinex Incorporated. Check me out on your smartphone at ValerieBittner.com, then check out Centinex.com. Okay, so informative. This I did with the countesses. Underarm sweat? Not the hot look for summer or any other time of the year. For millions of Americans, bothersome underarm sweating is a daily struggle, but there's a solution that can stop sweat in its tracks. MiraDry is the first and only FDA cleared device designed to treat the cause of heavy So sweat. they scared you with a problem. Are you walking around with sweaty pits? You know, so, so they, they've stirred your emotions. We have Valley Dermatology is the one who's gonna swoop in and save the day, informative. And 30 second commercial, done. Community outreach. This I did with the lovely Frank Bowinkle. We've become a bit of a team. What's cool about manufacturing? Hi, I'm Valerie Bittner, and I'm here at American Millwork and Cabinetry in Emmaus, Pennsylvania for the What's Cool About Manufacturing video contest. Evan, can you tell us um, a little bit about the event and how your students got involved? Yeah, we're uh, participating in the What's So Cool About Manufacturing video competition. It's a multi-county wide competition that's being put together by the Manufacturers Resource Center in conjunction with PBS. It's just something that our school is really pushing the career pathways uh, for students as they go to high school. So Emily, what is cool about manufacturing? Well, here at American Millwork, they really customize everything to what you want it to be and they really strive for success. It's really cool that everything is made here. Every piece that they make goes through a process. Everything's custom made. The computer technology makes it easier for everyone to work here, but doesn't eliminate anyone's job at the same time, so it speeds up the process. I really like the uh, machine that's behind us. It sorts all of the different panels that they use to build the different cabinets by their size and weight. What's cool about manufacturing? It's really cool that you can just create basically whatever you want. I thought it was hard to have to know where every piece of wood was, how to put it together, and I thought it was cool how people knew how to do that. What was cool about teaching the kids today? Seeing 
me at their age and asking the, the kinds of things that I did when I was their age. I'm hoping it'll inspire some of the younger students that don't really know what they're going to do in the future. There's a lot, a lot to learn and a lot to gain from manufacturing. We want to keep the interest in this industry. And it does require a lot of skills, it does require a lot of, uh, a lot of studying, a lot of, a lot of learning. We need to keep the industrial aspect of, of the country going. George, most people don't think about millwork when they think about manufacturing. Uh, can you speak a little more to that? Sure. Most people think of automotive industry, assembly line work, but the architectural millwork industry, as well as casework, is a very fluid, very moving, very progressive type environment. We're well uh, clean, CNC equipment, well managed, and pays well. What made you get involved with this event? We're very civic-minded and very. Uh, we like to give back to the community, and we're part of many organizations. This was just a natural extension to that community-minded spirit that American Millwork has. So the cool thing is American Millwork and Cabinetry, again, they make things like uh, the bar uh, that you see here or any kind of millwork needs that a uh, business may need, but they do a lot of community outreach. So they bring Frank in every time they're doing something and they have a page on their website that highlights their community service. And so people who are trying to decide between this one and this one may say, aw, we like them. Look what they do with part of their profits. On, do you know that I'm going to give you some social media uh, information here. Do you know that on your LinkedIn profile, that's where all of your community service can live? There is a volunteer section. So every time you volunteer, you've donated a gift certificate, Wendy, you know, to uh, a silent auction. Uh, you want to put that there. I have had people contact me through Lincoln who said, I am very impressed with your community service. So take advantage of it, especially if you have a website, have, um, have a page dedicated to your community outreach, especially if you have an ongoing, like Jeff has an ongoing community outreach problem. Gary has a community outreach that you focus on, which is pediatric cancer. All righty. So how do you integrate all of this into your online presence? These are my little helpful hits, uh, hints. Um, establishing yourself as an expert in your field. So that's what you're doing. So you want to share posts that are helpful to your clients. Again, we don't want to become sleepies. What we want to say is, um, do you have problem, you know, fitting uh, for a dress? We can custom make a dress for you. Do you have an event coming up and you really need a fun, unique uh, decoration? And a Karen can post all day, you know, with all of her wonderful balloon creation. Add links that drive followers to your website. I'm going to have examples of all of these. Respond to your reviews, good or bad. I had a very bad experience with a web designer who not only didn't give me my money back, but basically ignored it. Are you kidding me? I, but then recently I um, wrote a bad review for a restaurant that I went to. I won't give you the details. They immediately responded to it. And within a couple of days, I had a $50 gift certificate for my $35 meal. They made good on it, and I have gone back to that restaurant since. Respond to your bad reviews. So <clears throat> share posts that are helpful to your clients. So obviously, I'm advertising myself here for original photography. And I said, what are you selling? Flowers, candy, jewelry? Uh, what's, what you're really selling is love. So use original photos to create, you know, creative advertising. So that was my post, but I used my original photography to boost it. Do you know that on Facebook, you can replace the photo that's connected with the link with one of your original photos? So if um, Terry 
wanted to post something about how snack food is giving everybody heart disease. She can have either a photo just of one of her snacks, of one of her vending machines, the Snacky Mats logo. In this case, this was an article called How to Become a Professional Actor. And all I did was switch the photo to one of mine. So that whenever you see links on my page, you're always going to see my face. Unless it's a, I recently posted one about Kevin Bacon. No one's going to believe that this is Kevin Bacon. So as much as we'd like to. I only have one degree of separation, by the way. Add links that drive followers to your website. So this is what I love about LinkedIn. Whenever you publish a post on LinkedIn, you can always add a link. So I, uh, professional voiceovers will double your video marketing. I included a whole bunch of information about this, but I also included a voiceover that I did uh, for somebody's web video, and then here's the link right away. So the, again, really take advantage of LinkedIn there because you can always drive people right back to your website. And don't forget to be social on social media. Kate Alfata, again, she looked at me one day and she says, Valerie, you're sucking the social out of social media. <laughs> because all I was doing was posting work-related things. So let people know you're fun. So, but, you know, try to keep the fun related to your field. So this model humor uh, and the sign in, the, uh, um, in this agency says, welcome to the famous artist's modeling agency. Get it? Funny. So show the lighter side of yourself as well. Use podcasts and videos. Um, everybody knows uh, Geraldine Viola, uh, Cupcakes by Gigi. She has become the goddess when it comes to posting quick videos. She's just using her iPhone. Her most recent one was her delivery man, AKA her father, in a pool drinking some kind of a drink with a whole bunch of fruit and flowers in it. She's like, we gotta get him busy. You know, call and place your orders for, um, you know, Christmas and Christmas Eve. It was quick, it was cute, it was funny. She also does a lot of baking tips where a lot of people, actually, as I was baking cookies this weekend, I used a lot of her tips, but there's some people who are like, oh, hell no, I'm just gonna call Geraldine and she's gonna bake my cookies for me. So she's pretty smart about it, but podcasts are my new thing. So I'm just going to play you the introduction of mine. Modeling, acting, voice acting, got questions? I'm Valerie Bittner, and I'm here to answer your questions. And if I don't have the answer, I'm going to find someone who does. As a professional model and actress since 1993, Valerie Bittner has seen and learned a lot. While still actively working in TV, film, and print, she enjoys sharing what she's learned over the years, consulting on marketing, and helping others get into the entertainment industry. This is The Martini Shot, Valerie's podcast, where if you or someone you know is an aspiring actor or model, the advice is invaluable. Here she is right now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to my very first episode so of The Martini Shot. I run this Shot. podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. You can also listen to it on my website. And uh, people are sending me questions via social media or my website, and I'm addressing those questions. And by the way, the name The Martini Shot is a production uh, term. Uh, the Martini Shot is the last shot of the day because the next shot will be in your glass. <laughs> so... If you would like to learn more about what I do, um, you can subscri subscribe, rate, and comment to The Martini Shop um, uh, through my website. And when you do so, that also helps me move up in the Google and iTunes ratings. So I would appreciate it if you did that for me. If you would like to start your own professionally produced podcast, mine is produced by uh, Steve Mittman Social Media. He is wonderful. And again, this is how you establish yourself as an expert in your field. Every Thursday, I have a new post that goes on my social media that just takes me from being here to being here as somebody who has more knowledge. And then if you would like to, me to consult on your next marketing campaign, you can visit my consulting page again through my website. 
And last but not least, when it goes to social media, do not delude yourself that your private pages and your business pages are separate. They are not. I have 2,500 followers on my uh, personal page, and I have 2,100 followers on my business page. And many of them overlap. So every time you post something, think about it. Who do I want to do business with? I want to do business with everybody of every religion. I want to do business with everybody on both sides of the aisle. Now, that doesn't mean, like right now, my cover photo is of my dog, Reuben, and Rudolph. Please tune in and say it. It's so cute. So obviously, you know, I'm posting a Merry Christmas. But I'm not posting any kind of red rick. I'm not doing anything that's so biased that it's going to alienate somebody who is uh, celebrating Hanukkah, who's celebrating Kwanzaa. I, again, I really am very, very mindful of that, and you should be too, unless you only want to do business with this religious group or with this political party. Because let me tell you, people do judge. And the other thing I want to point out is somebody recently had a private chat. And if you've ever done that on Facebook, you can set up a private message and only include, let's say, 10 people. Well, this person did this, spouted some really hateful things. And somebody within that group did not agree, took a snapshot of it, and sent it to everyone. If you put it on the internet, people, everybody, there's a chance that everybody will see it. So that is just my warning to you as a business owner. I treat my personal page, my personal page you're gonna see a little bit more fun, you're gonna see my vacation photos. Coming this spring, you will see pictures of my new grandson, but you're not going to see me doing a keg stand. You're not going to see me at a political convention. So keep it in mind. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you.